Today, I'm going to show you how to make sourdough English muffins. No, not the cake kind in a paper mold. I'll also show you how to make homemade eggs benedict. Oh boy. Hi, I'm Sune and I'm a food geek. Today I'm going to show you how to make English muffins, or simply muffins as they're called in the United Kingdom. They're normally leavened using commercial yeast, but today we're going to be using a sourdough starter. The normal kind is normally left to ferment on the kitchen counter, which gives it a slight tang. Using sourdough starter, the tang comes as a given, which also means that it almost seems like it should have been made this way all along. They're usually served toasted with whatever meat that you prefer, but most commonly a sandwich meat like ham, then your choice of veggies, and on top an egg, often a fried egg or a scrambled egg. Then it's topped with the top part of the muffin. If you're new to this channel, I bake a lot of sourdough bread and I make delicious food from all over the world. My goal is to show you how to get the most out of every ingredient and I want to teach you how to do that in simple and understandable steps. So join me by subscribing and ringing the bell so you won't miss any future videos. After we finish baking the English muffins, I'll also show you how to make Eggs Benedict, my absolute favorite fancy breakfast. Toasted English muffin topped with fried Canadian bacon, a perfectly poached egg, and then homemade hollandaise sauce. That's ba basically an egg and butter emulsion. <laughs> and topped with some delicious chives. Look forward to it. If you'd like to support the channel, please buy some merch, or you can use the links in the description for tools and ingredients. Or consider becoming a Patreon, which I'm linking in the card above. Thank you. Those were the words. This is the recipe. The recipe, the ingredients, and the amounts are linked in the description and the card above. Add 290 grams of flour to a bowl, then add 15 grams of sugar, and six grams of table salt. Mix it well with your hand. Then add 200 grams of milk and 100 grams of sourdough starter. This shouldn't be discard, but a regular fat starter. Then mix it until it comes together. Once the dough gets too stiff, dump it out on the kitchen counter and knead it until all the flour has been absorbed into the dough. Then cover the dough and leave to ferment for about eight hours. When the fermentation is done, grab a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. Dust the parchment with corn flour or semolina. Flour your kitchen counter liberally and dump the dough out. Start flattening the dough and tease it into a square. It should be about one centimeter, a half an inch thick. Then use an 8 cm or 3 inch round cutter to cut muffins out of the dough. Put the muffins onto the baking sheet. Then sprinkle the dough with more corn flour. Press the rest of the dough out and cut into muffins. Use 
you should be able to make about 10 of them using this dough. <laughs> yes, I know there's only nine there and enough dough to make a 10th. I, I just wish I could go back in time. Cover the sheet with a dish towel and let the muffins rise for an hour. Then it's time to cook the muffins. Put the pan onto medium high heat and let it come up to temperature. Put as many muffins as you can on the pan, but they shouldn't touch each other. Put a lid over top so that the muffins can steam themselves. Cook for about seven to 10 minutes until the muffins are golden brown on the bottom. Then take off the lid and flip the muffins over and cook them for seven to 10 minutes more. Put the muffins on a wire rack and let them cool. Or if you're just gonna eat them now, why not just crack one open and slather it in butter and jam. And don't forget a nice cup of tea while you're at it. I have different plans though. To make hollandaise sauce, first we need to make clarified butter. So we add 250 grams of butter to a small pot. Salted or not salted, doesn't matter, you're gonna season the sauce later. Let it melt slowly and skim the foam off the top. Keep going until there's no more foam. Then pour the butter through a muslin lined sieve or a coffee filter if you don't have muslin. Now it's time to make hollandaise. Put a pot with water at the bottom on medium low heat. Grab a metal or glass bowl that fits over top of the pot. It's important that it doesn't touch the water when you put it on the pot. Put three yolks in the bowl, add the juice of half a lemon, about 15 milliliters. Whisk until it's foamy and then put the bowl on the top of the pot. From now on, you just keep whisking until the sauce is done. Whisk until the egg mixture is warm and then add a little bit of butter. and then a little more. Keep going slowly at first, and then more and more until the sauce has the right consistency. Yeah, I went a bit too far. Oh, butter, how I love thee. <laughs> but we'll fix it in a bit. Then season with salt, Just add a bit of water until you have the right consistency. Put the sauce in a small bowl and cover it with cling film until you need it. Then put a piece of Canadian bacon on a pan and fry it on both sides. None of my local stores had any Canadian bacon, so I got a nice smoked ham instead. Then grab a fork and split open your English muffin and put it in the toaster. Then the last thing that's left to do is to poach an egg. Put a good pot of water on high heat until it's boiling and then turn it down to barely a simmer. Add a tablespoon of vinegar. Swirl the water around and carefully drop the egg down the vortex.
Let it cook for about four minutes and then fish it out of the water using a slotted spoon or a spider. Now it's time to assemble our eggs benedict. First, we start out with a toasted English muffin, then a piece of Canadian bacon or ham, then a poached egg, seasoned with salt and pepper, Top with delicious hollandaise and some fresh chives. And now it's time for some yolk porn. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Toasted muffin, gooey egg, and a sauce with a ridiculous amount of butter. What's not to love? You can easily freeze these uh, and let them defrost in the fridge for about 12 hours. Personally, I put them in the toaster on the defrost program. You can also uh, defrost them in the microwave, although I haven't tried it. I hope you learned something today. See you next time. Cool.